Squad's white collar criminal defense attorney, Rachel Fazay. Rachel, good morning to you. Thanks for being with us. Uh, Trump's, good morning. Thanks for having me. Trump's team says they're already working on the appeal. Were there any issues during the trial that stood out to you that you think could be significant to that effort? I think the main issue that they are going to appeal is the Stormy Daniels testimony. And I think the basis for appeal there will be that it was overly prejudicial to Trump, um, that she didn't need to go into the detail regarding their sexual encounters that she went into. And during her testimony, his team asked for a mistrial twice. The judge did t caution her, but he did not revoke her testimony or take her off the stand or declare a mistrial as a basis. And I think that is the number one reason for why they will go in and appeal this case. Uh, there will be others. They, they will appeal the law that this was based on. They will appeal various objections that they made and that the judge uh, let in other testimony that he should not have let in. But I think the, the, big, the big point will be Stormy Daniels. And Rachel, Trump was not supposed to be speaking publicly about witnesses, jurors, and others involved in the case because he was under a gag order, which he violated, of course, during this case. That is still in place. Moving forward, will it remain in place? It's unlikely that that gag order will remain in place. Gag orders are meant to preserve the presence of the, the trial and the jury and not influence anything that's going on in the courtroom. And now that it is over, it is likely that President Trump will be given his, uh, <laughs> the gag order will be lifted and he will be free to speak in the manner that we are accustomed to. Uh, if he is sentenced to prison, which, you know, legal analysts say it's unlikely um, in this case, but he has other cases he's fighting as well. Would you be concerned about unrest in this country, especially given the events of January 6th? I think that's hard to say. It's, it's hard to say what would happen. I, there will always be protesters outside of that prison. It will be, practically speaking, a nightmare to have him housed inside of a prison. Um, but as far as unrest and violence, I think that is just difficult to say, and it depends on who is serving as his proxy outside of prison and who's leading those groups. And of course, Trump has a ton of other legal troubles, even though this verdict was historic. He's still facing three other criminal cases. How will this impact those cases, if at all? It does not. The, the impact there. Um, those cases proceed as they would. If he is in prison at the time those trials take place, he will be removed and able to attend those trials and then taken back to prison. Um, they'll have to work things out because they're in different states. But, the, but as far as practically speaking, how those cases proceed, they should just proceed as normal. Mm -hmm. What about sentencing in those cases, though, if he's a convicted felon as opposed to someone who has no prior convictions? You're exactly right. That's that's the big deal here is if he's convicted in the other cases, he's no longer getting the benefit of being a first time offender, which he will get in this case. And so his sentence may tend to be heavier as as a repeat offender. Uh, so that's where the real effect would be is after a conviction in another case. All right, folks have so many questions this morning after this historic verdict. Rachel, Fizet, thank you so much for joining us with your insight. My pleasure.